A political showdown. Voters in Rutherglen and Hamilton West go to the polls next week in a by-election, seen as a crucial test of public opinion ahead of the UK general election. Stay tuned for a live debate as candidates directly cross-examine each other. Good evening. The winner of the Rutherglen and Hamilton West by-election will succeed the disgraced former MP Margaret Ferrier, who was ousted for breaking Covid rules. She won the seat at the last general election in 2019. On that day, four parties secured enough votes to save their deposits and we invited each of their candidates into the studio tonight. The SNP's Katie Loudon, Scottish Labour's Michael Shanks and the Scottish Conservatives' Thomas Kerr are here to defend their policies and test each other's mettle. But the Scottish Lib Dem candidate has opted out tonight. So let's get going. Each candidate here will take it in turn to face cross-examination from their rivals. First up is the SNP candidate, Katie Loudon. Times are tough and we're all feeling the pinch of the Westminster cost of living crisis. We're all paying the price for Tory incompetence and Keir Starmer's Labour offers no alternative. We can do so much better. Labour are happy to continue austerity, backing policies such as the two child cap and Brexit. We can't let them. As your SNP MP, I will fight for the support you need during this cost of living crisis. And I will stand up for this area in the face of Westminster austerity. Michael Shanks, you're first to have two minutes to question Katie Loudon. During this by-election, I've spoken to countless people who are facing the cost of living crisis and struggling to make ends meet. And I wonder why in the middle of that cost of living crisis, you therefore support making it even tougher for those people with increased income tax, increased council tax, and this ludicrous suggestion that people should be taxed to go to their work in Glasgow. Why do you support those policies? So I would agree with you on one thing, Michael, and that is certainly the forefront of people's minds when we speak to them on the doorstep just now, is the cost of living crisis. That is what people want to speak to us about. And what I want to do if I was elected as the MP is put in real cost of living support for people, that which they need at the moment. That's what people are telling us. Council tax is an example. No decision has been made on this yet. And to suggest otherwise, frankly, isn't being straight with voters of Rutherglen and Hamilton West and the people who are watching on TV at the moment. There, at this Isaac? moment, the, there is a consultation and people are clear to put in their views. Now, so you're your sitting view? here today, you are not being straight with people when you're speaking about this. Labour in Wales have done the same. I think the real question, Michael, is one for you. We are for fair taxation. If Labour are not for fair taxation, what are Labour for and what do you stand well, for Michael in this by-election? Because what so, I stand so, for in this by-election is making sure people get the cost of living okay, support, so, which So we don't know whether you still agree with those policies or not, but let me give you another one. One in seven people in Rutherglen and Hamilton West are on an NHS waiting list. And I met a woman last week who had to remortgage her house to be able to afford an operation she'd waited three years for on the NHS. Do you think Hamza Yusuf owes those people an apology for the SNP's uh, handling of the NHS in Scotland? I have tremendous sympathy for anyone who finds themselves in that situation. But again, Michael, this is about being very selective with the facts here. There is not a single part of the UK at the moment where there aren't issues with the NHS. The NHS is under pressure. And that's because the economy has been crashed by Westminster and by the Tories. The SNP okay. has put in record funding to the health service. Okay, well, can there I are ask more you, G I, GPs I, I, per capita I, I, in very Scotland. Very briefly, because we're coming on. Can Thomas, I ask you a, I, no, 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 sorry. Thomas Kerr, it's your two minutes now. Katie, yesterday you let the cat out of the bag on GMS when you said that you'll always follow the party line. That's not what I said, Thomas, so, so let, no, let's just start I'll, off I'll, I'll, well, I'll, I'll quote the exact words. I'm always going to follow the position of my party. That's what you said. Don't you think that people in Rulloglin and Hamilton West deserve an MP who's more principled That's rather than someone who supports the party? That's not what I said, and I will talk about the context of that because that isn't what I said. I want to be elected for to represent the people of Rutherglen and Hamilton West and I will put them first. The That's question so I had been asked yesterday was on council funding and my answer to that was I am a councillor, I will always stand up for local government funding. That's not what you my said, party though, took that position in COSLA and I backed that position in COSLA. I backed that position in COSLA, I backed that position in council last week, and I backed that position in a council meeting this morning. Well, that's, that's because said, my priority is about point, local point, services. So I'm, I'm glad you clarified that you'll always stand up for people in Rutherglen and Hamilton West. So 
Michael had suggested about the congestion charge. So just to clarify for voters in Rilliglin and Hamilton West, do you support the SNP bringing in a congestion charge in Glasgow City Council that you know will hammer You're a Glasgow across? City Councillor, so this is a matter for you. I'm a South Lanarkshire Councillor. But do you agree with it? I, I, you get your task of questions in a minute. I'm asking you, do you agree with it? Do you agree there should be a congestion you're trying, charge? What you're doing is you're trying to ask a gotcha question and you have the cheek to ask a question for me when the Tories have so crashed the economy. So do you agree with it or do you not you agree with it? You have pursued a hard well, let's, let's move on to, let's move on to another point. People in our area, Let's move on to another point. So of millions of pounds. The congestion charge is one thing, the low emissions is another thing. Both of these policies that are in Glasgow City Council are hurting families across Rilligal and Hamilton West who are coming into the city. Michael had already mentioned the council tax rise. You didn't clarify your position. Do you support the rises? I'll yes or no? I'll tell you what's hurting families. Do you across support it? Yes or no? The canvas, the I, I'm, not, I'm not interested in your pre prepared West statement. Community. I'm asking, um, do you support it? Yes or no? Pardon? Do you support the council tax rise? Yes or no? I support a conversation on this because I am in favour of fair taxation. What I'm not in favour of. So do you think it's fair that somebody on less than twenty thousand pounds a year pays more in tax place, in Scotland than they do in the rest of the UK? When there's support for people in place, which there is, what you are actually asking is you are asking for people like Rishi Sunak sitting in a band okay. H or above house to be protected. I'm saying that everyone needs to be protected, and they need to be protected okay. from cruel policies like the Tories at okay, Westminster. That, that, that's your time up, so now it's time for Michael Shanks to take his place in the spotlight. I'm Michael Shanks. I'm standing to be your MP here in Rutherglen and Hamilton West. Rutherglen's my home, it's where I live, it's where I volunteer, it's where I train to be a teacher. This is a community that's full of potential. But right now we're living through a crisis made worse by two governments that are not on our side. I know that by working together we can tackle the cost of living crisis and unlock our full potential. So on the 5th of October I'm asking you to vote Scottish Labour for a fresh start for this community. And Thomas Kerr, you're first up to ask the questions this time. Michael, I think it's fair to say that this by-election has shown that Labour has got more flip-flops in Blackpool Beach. So I'm wondering if you can try and clarify some positions that you've held during this campaign. A couple of weeks ago you said that you were fully supportive of Nicola Sturgeon's gender reform bill. Keir Starmer said he's opposed to Anna Sarwar's change his mind despite whipping these MSPs. What's your position today on that? Well, I think it's a real shame that you've chosen to make this a by-election issue. Is well, if you let me answer then... I think it's a great shame you've chosen to do that because you've changed your own position on this to turn it into a wedge issue in this so by-election. I've been, been very, very clear that the SNP's bill was flawed but that fundamentally Labour supports reforming the gender recognition process because for the tiny number of people that are identify as trans, they are incredibly marginalised they struggle with inequality and they need a government supporting them. They need a bit of dignity and a bit of respect. So and your that, position is still that you back that, but that's fine. The second one I was going to ask was on the two-child limit. So you've said that you're opposed to it, although you kind of changed your mind yesterday in GMS. Keir Starmer says he's for it. What's your position today? We've been very clear that a full review of universal credit is what's on the, necessary. On the particular because, of the two-child limit, what's well, your position? The two-child is part of the universal credit review. Uh, you, your party's introduced that we opposed the two-child cap throughout its introduction so, in the House of Commons. You introduced a poll. Well, so, 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 so you've, you've asked me about so, a horrific but, well, policy that you've introduced. But, you, but you're still all uh, over the place on it. The third point is on the congestion charge. So you've said, I think if you, you, you questioned Katie on the congestion charge and says that you're opposed to it. I sit in Glasgow City Council where Labour councils have proposed this twice. It was in their manifest in 2017. We opposed it in the council. So are you saying that the Glasgow Conservatives were right and Glasgow Labour was wrong? Well, I think we've got to separate out the low emission zone from no, what no, the SNP are No, this is a congestion charge, it's not the low emission so, zone. Glasgow I, Labour voted for a congestion well, charge twice. I think this is a question and answer, Thomas. So I think it's really, really important that we separate out the two things. What's been proposed by the SNP here is a tax on people in South Lanarkshire crossing the bridge into Glasgow simply because they happen to not live in Glasgow. That would hammer working people at a time where they're all trying to struggle to cope with the cost of living crisis brought about by your government. And I think, yet again, you've chosen to ask questions that shed absolutely no light but the point on the economic is that incompetence of the party Conservative okay. Party, which you're responsible for. OK, it's Katie Loudon's turn now. Michael, voters in Rutherglen and Hamilton West and people at home have been waiting for weeks to hear where you stand. I am very clear about the fact people need real cost of living support and they need it now. I'm asking you here tonight, are you going to support my call for a £400 energy rebate to help people with their bills this winter? Well, we've been really clear on a number of things in the cost of living crisis and particularly on energy, that we want to see um, an energy system that is 
that helps working people with their bills at the moment. So a plan that would put £1,400 back into the pockets of people every year. Uh, a GB energy company headquartered here in Scotland that creates jobs but also brings down bills in the long term. So we need now? an would energy... For, we would you support, uh, um, support just now, £400 of support just now? Well, I think like a lot of the, the support in the cost of living crisis, we've been very clear that people do need money back in their well, pockets. You're not being we've very clear, for, that's why I'm asking well, you. We've pushed for, for example, a real windfall tax on the energy giants so that we can invest in bringing people's bills down. But that, that needs the support in the House of Commons to be able to do that, and hopefully that's something you would support as well. It's the Conservatives, of course, that this have not This is quite a long-winded way of saying no. I'm sorry? This is quite a long-winded way of saying no. Well, I, I'm happy to look at it as a proposal. I but haven't you, seen it until now. you're not going to commit now. to supporting it. Okay. Well, I, I think being able to commit to things, Katie, is really not something okay, you should so be talking about. My, my second question then. So, as I say, that was quite a long-winded way of saying no, so let's try something else. I've written to the UK Chancellor to ask for tax relief to support people who are struggling with their mortgage payments just now, because that is a really important issue, not only to people in our constituency, but viewers at home. Are you going to support my calls for tax relief on mortgage payments? Well, I, th I think the answer to people's rise in mortgage bills, and of course in our constituency it's £170 on average that people are paying as a result of the Tory economic incompetence, I think is to get some competence back into our economic system so that actually mortgages come down for everybody. Because uh, we've got interest rates out of control at the moment so for a lot of people. So specifically on tax relief, so, though, are you going to support I, this? I, again, I haven't looked at the specifics of your proposal, Katie. I'm happy to look at, uh, at whatever you've got. I asked there. you about but it I, yesterday. I think, I, th I think what we need to look at is in the round support for people in the cost of living crisis and, and putting people what money, money back money into in people's, people's pockets. pockets just now. Well, yeah, that's exactly that. what okay. Labour's New Deal for Working People will do, is taking a look at the, the okay. national minimum wage, okay. banning okay. zero hours contracts. I'm going, to, I'm going to have to stop you both there because now it's time for Thomas Kerr to set out his stall. As a working class guy who grew up in the east end of Glasgow, I know what people care about in this area. I know that times are tough and I know you want an MP focused on the real priorities like tackling the cost of living, fixing our NHS and getting good schools for our kids. I know that local people are fed up with higher taxes, savage cuts and public services that are crumbling under 16 years of the SNP. The reality is none of that will be fixed by a Labour flip-flopper or an SNP obsessed independence MP. So if you want a real working class straight talker as your local MP, I urge you to give me your vote on October the 5th. And Katie Lowden, your first ask questions. Thomas, earlier tonight you were asking Michael about the two child cap. We all know the truth is that Labour and the Tories are happy to see hundreds of thousands of children in Scotland pushed into poverty by retaining the two child cap. Are you pleased to have Labour's support on this issue? Well, I'm pleased that Labour have came around to the idea of trying to make sure that universal credit works and that we reform the welfare system. As I mentioned in my piece, I grew up in a working class background in the East End of Glasgow. I, I know the pain which causes when you're not got a welfare system that works. So I fully support universal credit being reformed and I fully support the two-child limit. What I would say is that your party has very successfully tried to make this a political wedge issue. And actually, this if is you a look, political but issue. But if, you, but if you look at the polling, you're behind on it because actually the majority of Scots in the last UGA poll support the two child limit. So you've been very successful at making this a political wedge issue. The 1,600 children in Rutherglen and Hamilton West affected The majority of people in Scotland support do support issue. it. The 1,600 children in Rutherglen and Hamilton West do not support this issue and you are plunging them further and further into, po into poverty after already crashing the economy. Going back to Labour and you for a second, where you're sitting. Labour are hardening their stance on Brexit. Are you disappointed you're now not the most pro-Brexit party? Absolutely not, and I, I think it's, it's interesting seeing the Labour position that they're holding now. You know, Michael had left the Labour Party because of Brexit. It's a very principled stance. He's now standing as a Labour candidate when Keir Starmer's supporting Brexit. So I think it's just an example of Labour seem to be all over the place when it comes to these sort of issues. They don't have any principles and they don't stand for something. So I wouldn't trust the Labour Party to run a bath, let alone run the country. But you're asking people to trust you. Yes, because I we, know who we're will stand sure. up for this constituency and offer real cost of living support. Well, that's not happened over not the past five Labour. years under both Labour and the SNP. Both Labour and SNP MPs have let it's this constituency down, so I don't think that's right. You crashed the economy. OK. OK, so are you finished? Excellent. Michael Shanks, you've got two minutes now. Boris Johnson, Liz Truss, Rishi Sunak, every single one of them has been disastrous for Scotland's economy and you've supported every single one of them. What do you say to people living in Rutherglen and Hamilton West who are now struggling to make 
uh, ends meet because of rising mortgage costs brought about by the incompetence of your party? Well, what I would say to people is I completely understand that times are tough. Times are tough across the globe now because of inflation's high, because of the war in Ukraine and because we just came out of a global pandemic. What I would say to people is since Rishi Sunak became Prime Minister, we've seen interest rates frozen, we've seen inflation come down, we've seen wages rise. That's shown that we're getting stuff done. Energy prices are coming down as well, Michael. And it's all well and good using fancy slogans that's been pre-prepared in focus groups, but actually what the Chancellor and the Prime Minister are doing is getting on with the job. Labour doesn't have a plan on any of this stuff. Well, let, let's look, leave the focus groups to one side, Thomas. What about something you wrote a year ago where you said Liz Truss was the absolute best person to be Prime Minister? We'll leave aside your judgement on that for a moment. You also said a year ago in the same article that Rishi Sunak had absolutely no plan to tackle the cost of living crisis. Isn't it true you were right then and wrong now? No, because if you look at what Rishi Sunak has done since he took the office of Downing Street, he's managed to bring inflation down, he's managed to get interest rates frozen, he's managed to get Problem wages increased. because of Liz he's Truss's managed... disastrous well, If you, if you think budget. that Liz Truss is the reason why interest rates are high across the well, globe, then I'm really, really worried, Michael, because actually this is a global so issue. the mini-budget had nothing whatsoever no, to do with Liz Truss was, was There was huge Prime mistakes Minister. that were made when Liz Truss was Prime Minister. And I'm not going to stand here, I'm a straight talker, people know that about me, so I'm not going to stand here and pretend that I know every single answer. What I am saying is since the Prime Minister took office, interest rates are coming down, inflation, interest rates have been frozen, inflation's coming down, energy prices are coming down. That's shown that the plan is working. I'd much rather we stick to the plan to make sure we get the economy back so, on track so rather than the plan you supported under a year Labour. ago with Liz Truss, which led us to the economic situation we're in today, you take no responsibility for. Well, I think but if you'd listen to me, if you'd listened to me literally two seconds ago, I said I'm absolutely so I'm a straight a talker budget. and I'm happy to say mistakes were made under Liz Truss. Mistakes were what made. I'm saying is that the Prime Minister since he's came to office has managed to get the economy back under track. I would much rather Rishi Sunak run this country than Keir Starmer, who doesn't Isn't it true that on anything. all of those issues, you were right a year ago, Rishi Sunak doesn't have a plan, and well, the no, only credible plan has been put if, out by the Labour Party. If you look at what, Rishi, if you look at, if you look at what Rishi Sunak has done, inflation's coming down, interest rates have been frozen, energy prices are coming down, and wages are rising. The plan is working. I'd much rather Rishi Sunak run the country than you guys. OK, thank you all very much. That, that went pretty quick. But that is the end of the debate. Thanks to the three candidates for taking part. But there are a total of 14 contenders in the Rutherglen and Hamilton West by-election. Polls will open at 7am on Thursday of next week. Now, as a service to democracy, we invited all the candidates who aren't with us tonight to also record personal pitches. So here we go. People have lost hope in the political establishment because they see politicians who are not focused on the needs and aspirations of ordinary people. We need to break clean of such failure of government. Uh, the Liberal Democrat is a party of conscience, a party of liberty, and as an MP, I would focus on the issues that matter to people, like the cost of living crisis and the state of the NHS. I believe I bring hope, not just to the politically disillusioned, but to a lot of voters on election day. I'm standing in this by-election to give people here the opportunity to elect a candidate that will put climate first. Never has that been more vital with the news that the Tories down south are making the climate wrecking decision to U-turn on net zero. I'll take bold, necessary action on the likes of child poverty. Here in Scotland with Greens in government, we're lifting 90,000 children out of poverty. Imagine the positive impacts that could be brought about by continuing that trend with even just one Scottish Green voice in Westminster. Standing for the Scottish Socialist Party, I pledge to only take the wage of a skilled worker to better reflect the lives of the people I'll be representing, to campaign to extend public ownership throughout the Scottish economy, to establish the idea that public transport should be treated as an essential service delivered free at the point of use, and to campaign for a statutory minimum wage of £15 an hour to bring millions of workers out of poverty, above all else, to bring socialism into this campaign. We cannot change the government in this election. Instead, let us get Celtic and Rangers into a Premier League of Great Britain. Vote Cook. Thank you. The reason I'm standing as an independent candidate is to bring some honesty to politics. The previous incumbent, Margaret Ferrier, took a 500-mile round trip on public transport whilst people were unable to see their dying relatives in hospital. And just the general low quality of politics where politicians seem to be enthralled to corporate interests rather than serving the public that they should do. I'm fighting against the air pollution pandemic that kills 7 million people around the world each year more than the COVID pandemic. I am fighting for justice, peace and love. And I would be grateful if you join me in this cause and vote for Prince Anket Love. And together we can unite England, unite the world, unite Scotland, 
unite Great Britain. Thank you very much. This election is about defeating a lie, a sick lie that a person can change sex. Our education system has turned into an indoctrination system. If you believe that a man can dress up like Barbie and because he's clutching a bit of paper that he should be able to enter women's spaces, then go ahead and vote for one of the machine candidates, the robo candidates. Otherwise, vote for me. We need proportional representation at Westminster so that Scotland can permanently escape Conservative majority rule. Uh, we need to rejoin the EU so that we can grow our economy and invest in our public services. If progressives work together, we could deliver these vital changes. Vote UK are the party with a plan both to deliver what progressive parties want, but also what voters desperately need uh, in order to build a stable, progressive, prosperous country. As a trade unionist and worker living in the constituency, I know all too well the impact of the cost of living crisis. Big business is getting richer while the working class are getting poorer. I'm standing on policies such as nationalisation of the big energy companies, full funding for council and NHS services, and a £15 an hour minimum wage. If elected, I'll also live on a worker's wage. None of the political parties in power are prepared to fight for these policies, so we need to build one that will, based on the trade unions. The net zero energy policy has wrecked the economy and put 600,000 Scottish households in fuel poverty. The people will not be forced to buy electric cars or heat pumps. As I showed in a book I wrote, net zero harms the economy and the environment much more than the climate could. Net zero is cracking us now. The other parties are realising that, and the sooner it ends, the better. I'm Colette Walker, Independence for Scotland Party. We are standing on a few key issues. Firstly, abstention. We believe that all Scottish elected representatives should be working here in Scotland directly with the constituents. We are also fighting for women's, disabled and carers' rights and child protection. So you've heard from all the candidates now, but we've got a minute left, so there's a little bit more from you guys. So just for a, a little bit of light relief, um, to get an idea of your political hinterland, just tell me who your, your political hero and your political villains are, starting with you, Thomas. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thank political you for that question, Colin. <laughs> I go on then, political I, hero. I don't have political heroes, genuinely, because of my background and whatever else. The, the hero that I have is my grandmother who brought me up. So I, no I, political that is, heroes. That is my political hero. You must have a political villain. Grand. Everybody's got oh, a political sorry, villain. Uh, We're coming up to pantomime right, season. Jeremy Corbyn fits that bill for me. Michael Shanks, any crossover there? I, I mean, I don't, I don't know Thomas's grandma, <laughs> but uh, I mean, I don't do villains either. I, I think for me, I've always looked up to John Smith, who I think was one of the best prime ministers we didn't have, and uh, I think in the Labour Party as well understood devolution and the importance for policy in Scotland and across but the. But no UK political either. villains. I don't do villains. Right, Keith. <laughs> okay, I, actually, I'm going to agree with Thomas in this one, my gran, but I would say. It very much was political what Briefly. she did. It was and activism Give us a before her now. time. Oh, it's not pantomime season yet. I'll leave it. So no villains from. Oh, jeez, you're all too <laughs> nice. You're all far too nice for this. But anyway, that is all we've got time for uh, on the Scotland Tonight special. We'll have another special programme next Thursday to bring you live coverage and analysis of the by-election count, and of course the result itself. Be sure to tune in for that. Good night. <laughs>